see Ray 8-1-1. One, and one. He has a draw right now, so slightly different record for the two players. Boswell in seventh going this round, so there are seven players at 9-1 and one or better in the tournament. Ray wins the die roll. He will be on the play. Flooded strand here for what I believe is hollowed, hollowed fountain. Yep, you can tell because uh, floating island is actually the origin for the word fountain. I did not know you were such a scholar. I am an etymology expert. He will cast slate of hand. Slate of hand. We saw yesterday Dan Jessup playing a Jess, a Jess guy Ascension deck. An exclusion from that deck. I really do like it in this style of strategy, though. Yes. That's, that's the first thing that I looked for when I saw you see a Jess guy mana, a bunch of a cantrips. You know, Jess guy Ascend Ascendancy just makes them get you an extra loot on every cast. Yeah. A full 19 cantrips in this deck. Thought Scours, Visions of Beyond, Serum Visions, Gitaxian Probe, and Slate of Hand. Boswell will start the game on a Thought Seize. The full five, the full Lava Axe to himself, Fetch Lanch into a Ravnica Duel into Thought Seize. But he'll get a look at any card. So we see Remand, Visions of Beyond, Path to Exile, Jeskai Ascendancy, and a Mountain. And Thought Seize is one of the Small number of cards that are very important for Boswell in this matchup. The discard spells, he has two copies of Abrupt Decay, two copies of Maelstrom Pulse that can potentially deal with the uh, powerful enchantments out of Ray's deck. One thing that Ray doesn't have that a lot of these Ascension lists do have uh, is Sylvan Carry added, which you can cast, which has Hexproof. It would force him to have Liliana. He doesn't have that. He's relying on Fate Stitcher as his combo creature, which is vulnerable to Lightning Bolt. Thoughts he's will take away the Jeskai Ascendancy. Now, James Ray was on a mulligan this game, it looks like. And Andrew Boswell's hand is the kind of hand that I really don't... I, it's so hard to be on a mulligan against. It looks like he's going to Thought Seize again on turn two, and maybe even Inquisition as well. When Thought Seize was standard legal, I ended up keeping a lot of very medium hands because I didn't want to get mulligan and then get Thought Seize. <laughs> yeah. So, Boswell goes for Inquisition. James Ray remands the Inquisition back to Andrew, Andrew's hand, but Andrew's going to insist. He'll play a fetch land here, and I think we're seeing that discard spell come, out, come right on out a second time. Yep. Really nothing else he's going to do with one mana. Probably figures that his life total is relatively safe in this matchup. That's, that's what I was going to ask you. Is Yeah, he's going to go down to 12 here as he Bloodstained Myers into an overgrown tomb. Is there a certain point at which Andrew needs to worry about James just sending lightning bolts upstairs? Yeah, you know, there are four lightning bolts on the deck. So <laughs> at 12, you know, those all just get there. Um, I suppose that's all the burn he has. Doesn't necessarily know about the Pyromancer's Ascension, so that makes it so it's just a two lightning bolt job. All right, so we look at the hand again. This is after a draw and after a remand. So it's Is It Charm, Visions of Beyond, Path to Exile, and Wandering Fumeral is what's left. I'd be curious to know how many players have ever drawn three cards with Visions of Beyond in a 60-card format. Look, that's the kind of card that I love to play, and I'm going to say I have yet to do it. I've had it in some decks, and yeah, it just it was always uh, see-through sands? Reach through reach mists? Through, reach through reach mists. Through mists. Reach through mists. Sift through sands is the one you have to cast third. Sure. Because you've got to get the unspeakable. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew will play Liliana of the Veil on turn three. And this is just junding at its best against combo. Discard, discard, discard each turn. Yep. And you look at his hand, Coligan's Command, Thought Caesar in his hand. He's not going to let up on the discard. No. And this is a great game plan here. He doesn't want to have cards like Terminate. If he draws them, he can just pitch them to Liliana. His position is fantastic. Visions of Beyond from James. So uh, when you talk about discarding on the combo deck side, there's two types of discard. There's targeted discard, and then there's mass discard. Mm. Um, a splinter twin deck, so, so you know, an A plus B combo, you want to targeted discard that deck. Yep. And against something like a ramp deck or a storm deck, you want to mass discard against them because all their cards are the same. Yep. But they need them all. So what I like from Andrew when he's doing things like this game plan here, it's much less targeted and the fact that he's just playing a discard spell each turn that, that's just on point for this matchup. Yep, going to take something from your hand, uh, 
for the Ascendancy deck, it needs to get an Ascendancy and enough cards to make that looting effective. Yeah, so James plays a land, then Andrew will take all the remaining cards out of James's hand. And in true John style, now that he's gotten rid of all of James's cards, he'll play a Tarmogoyf. That one should close this game out pretty quickly. That is just junding at its best. So the kind of the baseline for Tarmogoyf in most situations is instant sorcery land creature. I believe we're missing. Do we, do we have creature? We have enchantment because of the ascendancy. We do have enchantment. We don't have any creatures yet. And the way you would get that is Andrew would have to discard one to his own Liliana. Right. Yeah, instant sorcery, enchantment or, uh, land. A fate stitcher on Ray's side would do it. James draws off the top. It's going to be a Serum Visions. Scry looks like top and bottom. So he's found something he likes on top of the deck. What I do like about Jeskai Ascendancy is if James gets five lands in play and a Fate Stitcher in the graveyard, he can combo off nothing. Yep. Uh, and Wandering Fumarole actually can be used for the combo as well. OK. And it, that, if you're wondering why the turn works a 5-6, James does have a Fate Stitcher in the graveyard. You can see it there just in the bottom left when we zoom back out. So instant sorcery, land creature, and then that Jeskai Ascendancy is an enchantment. That makes the Tarmoglyph a 5-6. Yep, and that's the difference between a uh, four-turn clock and a five-turn clock here. And that's great. Here comes Tarmoglyph in for five. We'll knock Ray down to 12. And for Andrew Basel, here comes Coligan's command. Let's see what modes he wants. It's on the stack. James will thought scout in response. Just gets a second fate stitcher into the yard and another enchantment. It was looks like we had discard a card as the mode picked. And deal two damage, so raise down to ten. And now Liliana it's ticks to six. Two more attacks from Tarmogoyf will get there now. But there's two Fate Stitchers in Ray's graveyard. And he'll unearth one Fate Stitcher. He untaps the health fountain, he unearths another Fate Stitcher. He's going for it. Boswell's got no cards. Just what does James Ray have here? Then he'll play Serum Visions. Well, he needs to be able to get Ascension and actually cast another spell. Um, so I don't think he was really playing to anything there. He didn't have enough mana to cast Ascension and, say, flashback Yeah, and then play a Gataxian Probe or something, or something like, like that. Like yeah, he would need to have another card for a Gataxian Probe. There is a line where if he gets mills himself enough, then he can maybe say he thought scars himself into some Gataxian Probes, casts Visions of Beyond, he can then get more... He can get extra cards and then do the thing you're talking about, mm. Ascendancy into a Gataxian Probe. Yeah, one of the things when you're all cantrips is when you start the game, the, hand, the turn on uh, no cards in hand, you only have one card to work with. We don't have ways to generate extra cards outside of Visions of Beyond and Pyromancer Ascension. Sure. So game one, we'll go over to Andrew Boswell and Jund. So we go ahead and look over toward the sideboards. For James Ray, he's got Lightning Helix, a set of young Pyromancers, Two Crumble to Dust, two Timely Reinforcements, two Wear Tear, one Dispel, one Monastery Mentor, or two Monastery Mentors. What do we like there? So I'm pretty curious about this creature package here. Um, so you have to es expect that Boswell is going to be boarding out most, if not all, of his creature removal. And we saw him aggressively discarding his Lightning Bolts to Liliana the Veil in that first game. So there's a good chance that even those are getting sideboarded out. So the Pyromancer and the Monastery Mentor plan, that could potentially be very potent here. And one, were the, one way or the other, uh, I could see an argument for Dispel uh, to protect you know, Fate Stitcher on a combo turn or either of those creatures in the face of a lot of the removal spells from Boswell. Yeah, over to Andrew Boswell on Jund. He has a very Jund-esque sideboard, lots of different types of removal depending on the matchup. He's got Fulminator Mages, Kitchen Finks, and Ancient Grudges in multiples. Uh, none of those seem like they're right for this matchup, but then how about the one-ofs? So uh, Thoughtseize and Duress here are great. We saw that that was an entire game plan game one. So getting in more of that, getting rid of the Terminates and what have you, uh, that's just a clear upgrade there. 
Uh, Graftigger's Cage would stop Fate Stitcher from coming out of the graveyard. Um, so I could see Graftigger's Cage coming in here. And I actually don't hate Fulminator Mage. Um, the Wandering Fumeral is one of the ways for the Ascendancy combo to get going. And also, Ascendancy is a little bit tight on mana. Uh, you can Fulminator Mage them potentially off of a color or off of enough mana to really cast as many cantrips as they need to to get going. Uh, when they combo off, they want to cast Ascendancy and a, cam and a cantrip on the same turn. Uh, so if you keep them at three, three mana, you can choke them on that. Yeah, they are. Their mana is is shaky. So Fulminator Mage may, may be actually. I, I think I'm with you on that. That's a neat neat approach. Yeah. All right, players make it ready for game two here between Ray and Boswell. So over Star City Games and across the country, we've been doing Star City Games game night for just about a year now. So what that is is exclusive tokens and pins given away as prizes for a weekly tournament near you. So in August, we've been giving away the Young Burromancer. This is part of our creature collection. They are great parodies of some of your favorite magic cards. Four Young Pyromancers, for example, in, in James Ray's deck. You know, if you maybe you're not as much of a fan of the Pyromancer, but how about a Burromancer? You can win that on a pin, you can wear it around on your lapels, you can put them into play as tokens just for playing in those tournaments. I kind of wish this, that this, this was the art on the actual card. I just like this a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> making this elemental token. So next month we'll be premiering, you can win the Bone Chewer Giant. This is, of course, you know, everyone's favorite dog from Morning Tide. Yeah, play on Stone Hewer Giant, um, Stoneforge Mystic number two in your commander deck, as you might know it. <laughs> or maybe number three, you know, Steel, Sa Steel Shaper's Gift is like a better card. I don't know how much efficiency matters in that format. They let you play Soul Ring, so whatever. I think my favorite part of this card is that he has a tennis ball around his neck. I just caught that now, but that's phenomenal. Yeah, that's These things nice are touch. all great. All right, if your store gets registered in time, we can get you signed up for the October promo, and that is that is Hedgehog Hog. A play like, on the unhinged <laughs> card at uh, Atog Slumber uh, Party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, apparently this is a real magic card. I didn't know that Atog Slumber Party was a thing, but uh, yeah. Apparently, this is this is not an unhinged card. It's from Odyssey. Odyssey, Atog Atog, the Atog that eats other Atogs because we have to go deeper. <laughs> you can find this on tokens and pins. So find out a location and get signed up at starcitygames.com slash game night. Right now, we are still resolving mulligans for our second game. Andrew Boswell has kept on a five-card hand, scrying to the top. Now, the creature light combo decks are going to put more pressure on Jun's interaction than a lot of the other decks. So mulliganing aggressively to find a discard spell, to find an abrupt decay, are going to be quite important for Boswell in this matchup. James Ray will be on the play. Scalding Tarn into Steam Vent for Ray. He goes down to 17. And we'll start on Serum Visions. Another copy of Serum Visions in his scry, too. Remember, he does play two copies of Pyromancer Ascension, so sometimes second copies of these cantrips is a very welcome thing. Yep. And Serum Visions is the most abstractly powerful cantrip that uh, his deck has access to. So you just kind of want to draw a lot of that one anyway. All right, we're going to get a look at James Ray's hand. It's Duress from Andrew Boswell. We see Gataxian Probe, Lightning Helix, Is It Charm. Another Gataxian Probe, I like the mismatch. <laughs> uh, Slate of Hand. And then we'll get that one just up at the top there. Um, I believe it's a Fate Stitcher at the top. I'm, I'm interested that Lightning Helix is in in this matchup. Presumably, the primary role for this card, stop Dark Confidant. That is going to be one of Boswell's better cards in this matchup. It keeps the stream flowing, gives him more draws to find discard spells, to find Abrupt Decay. Uh, so that's presumably the argument for Lightning Helix here. He selected Slate of Hand. That is the best cantrip in James's hand. So we go back to James's turn two. He draws Visions of Beyond and then casts it, plays Wandering Fumeral, and passes back. Didn't have another land just yet. So was Andrew trying, he, he was trying to get James to stick on lands? Yeah, that's the cantrip that would see the most cards. With two redraws on Gataxian Probe, 
he had decent odds of finding a land this turn if he really wanted it, but uh, I do like the pick. Yeah, I mean, the concern is that James Seer envisions turn one, well, too. Well, here's a great thing about not having to cast those probes last turn. I believe oh, Young wow. Pyromancer is the pick up here. So here's, here's our Pyromancer, no longer in Burrow form. Uh, he's going to... He meant to play Gataxian Probe. You can't do that with Fate Stitcher. But now he'll start firing off the probes. On the plus side, Boswell already knew about that card, so not too big of a gaffe. Now I'll get to look at Boswell's hand. I believe he actually gets to... Yeah, here's another probe. Now, now okay, we'll actually look at it. Boswell, Huntmaster, Chandra Pyromaster... Liliana of the Veil, vale, and one more land in Stomping Ground. Liliana looked great in game one. It looks quite poor here. Chandra is quite good against Young Pyromancer, but it looks to be a little slow here. Boswell needs at least two more turns to cast that because he only has one more land in hand. Right. If James' deck falters some here, those four drops from Boswell look like they could be very good. Yeah. He has to start making things happen fast, though. And we, yeah, there's already a li still a Lightning Helix in Ray's hand that Boswell knows about. So not really a safe board for Huntmaster of the Fells. And, uh, it's debatable whether Boswell even wants to cast a Liliana on this turn. He would have to play Stomping Ground on tap, pay two life for that. And then the best mode is realistically plussing it minus two to kill an elemental token and then soak up a damage from the other one. Not very exciting. It's fine. Um, I could see making that line. But the problem with the, disc, the plus one play is Boswell wants all of his cards. Yeah, I feel like these plays help Boswell trade, but he, he wants to be winning. Yes. Uh, he might have to try for winning in game three, though. Lilian of the Veil is the turn three play for Andrew Boswell. He's going to tick her up it looks like, to four loyalty. Fate Stitcher discarded by James, Dark Confidant by Boswell. And now on end step, James will Thought Scour, getting a third elemental token. Yeah, and so Boswell knew that that Dark Confidant would be dead on arrival. He's already seen Ray's hand. He can deal with it. So I like the discard play here, though this Liliana is probably going to be biting it pretty quickly here. A nice mix of Donagans and Van Meters for Ray, <laughs> but they're going to do a great job of taking down Liliana. Here's Sleight of Hand making a fourth elemental. It's a party and everyone's invited. And I'm not even sure James needs Jeskai Ascendancy anymore. This young Pyromancer is just running away with the game. We're also going to see some pretty interesting sideboard shenanigans. Should we see a game three here? There's going to be a question for Bodswell. Do I need terminates? Can I beat a young Pyromancer draw? Is young Pyromancer going to be there in game three? I like this sideboard package a lot. So four damage goes at Liliana, one at Andrew. He's down to 14. And now he casts Fulminator Mage. So he has brought those in from the sideboard. Yep, that one's going to be a lot better on the play. But, um, yeah, I like having it in this matchup. Does knowledge of this, now that James knows that Boswell has them, does that matter for a th possible third game? It does. There's not much he can do about it. He just, you know, might incentivize a hand that is able to make more land drops a little bit higher. Um, he can maybe scry more intelligently on his Serum Visions. Right. But there's, there's going to be the question, is Fulminator Mage maybe the card that goes back to the sideboard? Should some Terminates come back into the deck for Boswell? Some more cantrips on end step there from James. He now has six elementals to go with Young Pyromancer. A swing of all the elementals. It looks like Fulminator Mage will block one, but five will come across. Good block. And a, a cheeky move there by Andrew Boswell. He blocked the one Chris Van Meter <laughs> token a little, at his fellow commentator, you uh, leaving not, all the Donigans around. You will not mock me. <laughs> Boswell draws, passes. His hand has two four drops in it. And James looks like he's been keeping himself covered here. Uh, he has an it Charm for a possible Chandra. He has a Lightning Helix for a possible Huntmaster. If I'm Ray here, I want to get that CVM back on the table as fast as possible. Ooh, I like this. This is cute. Okay, so it Charm's going to be cast by James, and he's going to remand the, his own it Charm. 
So what I like from James here, he, he baited Andrew Boswell with this play. And Andrew didn't take the bait, but it's a really neat one. So first he is at Charms to deal two to Fulminator Mage. Andrew could sacrifice in response. And if he does, James will then can then remand the Izzet charm. It's risk. Well, what's right. happening here? He has to hold priority if there's going to be no sacrifice so that he can remand the spell. Yeah. He would have to be okay with Andrew not sacrificing to do that play. Right. So, so what happens is that, ha that happens. James actually just immediately remands the spell. And then Andrew uses Coligan's command to kill the young Pyromancer. But that's still not enough, and then Andrew scoops to the elemental tokens. Now things are going to get pretty interesting. All right. So back to the drawing board. Andrew lost the game. Well, he did maul the five. You don't want to take anything away from that. Yep. But to an uncontested young pyromancer, you know, maybe he's boarded out some number of lightning bolts. Okay. He's what? got a disfigure in his sideboard. What I really like, we just saw Ray, if you caught it, shuffling his 75 together. Keeping Boswell okay. guessing what is going to be in the deck for game three. I love these mind games with this kind of deck. This is how you get your advantage um, in this matchup. The creature, the creature package is good sometimes. It's bad if Boswell, against Boswell's main deck configuration, you expect it to be good in the first sideboard game, and you leave him guessing as to what he needs to do in the third game. So what I like here, I'm not sure that... Boswell was caught off guard in game two. We saw Chandra Pyromaster in game two, and Andrew Boswell had actually brought it in. If he was not expecting young Pyromancer, why would he made that play? It does draw extra cards, and he does have some stuff in his main deck that he wants to get out. Uh, the Terminates, um, presumably some number of Lightning Bolt were coming out. Um, it's possible that Boswell was aware of this plan. Uh, but the Pyromaster, I think, is going good against both configurations. Yeah. Do you go as so far as to board in your Disfigure? It, I guess can hit a Fate Stitcher, and it would be great against a young Pyromancer. Yeah, I think Disfigure plays against either configuration here. All right, so Andrew Boswell, 9-1, and one, fellow commentator here over on SCG Live, also a member of Team Card Hoarder. The 32-year-old from Sugarloaf, New York, has a full top eight of top eights at Opens, including a win. He's... and. He's quite the interesting individual, a professional ceramic artist, actually, on top of being a both commentator and magic pro. Yeah, he does a few things. Jack of several trades. And for him, he's been very quietly having a string of good finishes here. He had a great finish over at Grand Prix Minneapolis just a couple months ago, um, nearly making the top eight at that event. And it seems like just about every event I see him play in, he is pushing the top 32. Yeah, he's been putting up very consistent results. Pretty much everything he's been playing as of late. Of course, uh, eight open top eights and a win to his name. He's got a very solid resume. Yeah, not an unreasonable pick. This year, we are having a lot of SCG Live players um, making deep runs. We saw Craig Kremples losing the finals of the Invitational. Would not be surprised to see Boswell do something similar. Yeah. Had some guy top eight Indianapolis with a Delver deck earlier this season. Tell me more. I think he lost in top eight. It, was, oh, it wasn't much. What a scrub. A lot of players choke under pressure in those high stake matches. Yeah, you know, it's like when you spend all your time watching Magic, you forget how to play it. And I think that was on, <laughs> that was on full display during the tournament. <laughs> Game three, Boswell will be back on the play. Game one, he disc used discard spells to bury James Ray, but it was young Pyromancer taking game two. Boswell not with the kill spell. Ended up making seven tokens before Boswell conceded. So there were seven on the table. It was more like ten total, right? It was about the sixth one where you realized there wasn't any coming back from it. No card like Electricery or some sweeper in Boswell's deck. I love me an Electricery. Two Maelstrom Pulses. He will start the game on Inquisition of Kozilek, and we'll get a look at James Ray's hand. So, young Pyromancer. We have, we have land. So, young Pyromancer, Fairy Conclave, Gataxian Probe, another probe, a Visions of Beyond, a second Visions of Beyond, and a Basic Mountain. 
And Boswell could not any faster take the young Byron so that defeated him game two. It's uh, one business spell and a bunch of redraws. Yeah, so, yeah, two visions, two probes, Fairy Conclave, and Basic Mountain. Yep. I like the pick for the uh, Urza Block Fairy Conclave. You think you're more fan of that than 10th edition? Easily. I'm shocked. His deck is uh, mostly foils. I could see going for the Summer of Magic foil, though this is the Urza Block foil copy. He'll play Fairy Conclave and pass. The draw for the turn was Slate of Hand from Race, and now up to five cantrips. And Boswell's going to take another look. Sees that he drew a cantrip. Boswell says, yeah, I'll take that one. Now the question is, does Boswell have a second land? And I don't believe he did. Ugh. This is a very daring keep from Boswell. So what he kept was a hand of Inquisition and two Thought Seizes and a Dark Confidant, one land on the play. If he hits, you know, he, he'll know that the Dark Confidant is going to survive. If he finds that land, discard into Dark Confidant is among his most powerful starts, if not just the line for his best possible hand. Ray will cantrip and then play a tapped Glacial Fortress. Third Thought Seize effect from Boswell. Did he hit the land, though? That is our question. Visions of Beyond will be taken. He has left James Ray with two lands and two Gitaxian probes. But for Boswell, he misses the land again here. His draw was Maelstrom Pulse. He has a little bit of time. Ray's hand is still not really doing anything, though this draw it's, is phenomenal. Yeah, he draws a copy of Young Pyromancer. And now those two Gitaxian probes, they don't look nearly as bad. No. So he'll cast the first, get, and this is looking to be a repeat of game two, gets an elemental token. I like Ray paying life, at least for the first copy here. If he finds another one-mana cantrip to cast, he'll be able to cast three spells on this turn and make three tokens. Two Dark Confidants, a Tarmogoyf, a Kolagon's Command, and a Maelstrom Pulse are in Boswell's hand. So if he can start running lands off the top, he does have an answer to these elementals. Yes. Though, yeah, it would, it would take two turns of casting three mana spells to deal with the elementals and the pyromancer. Second probe from James makes another elemental. His first probe drew a copy of Path to Exile. The second one drew an Is It Charm. That Is It Charm uh, may very well lock this game up, even if Boswell hits. All right, well, Boswell hits. It's Wooded Foothills, and now he gets to have his pick of two drops. Tarmogoyf to block or Dark Confidant to hit the third land. This is a big choice. Yeah, he doesn't know the contents of Ray's hand anymore. Yeah, that Path to Exile was drawn off the first Gitaxian probe, so Andrew does not know it's there. There's not enough stuff yet where he necessarily has to block, though uh, the Tarmogoyf is the safer play. Yeah, he'll play Tarmogoyf, and James will immediately path it. That gives Andrew the third land and his first red source. So a lot of play to that. Actually, Andrew will just go ahead and get a swamp. Doesn't even need the red. Getting tagged by that path means he doesn't have to hit on a draw step to start casting three mana spells. Oh, makes sense. Uh, Boswell doesn't play a basic mountain, so easy choice from the path to exile. It's hard to find cards that aren't in your deck. Right. An attack will put Boswell down to, I believe, seven. He's done a ton of damage to himself from Thought Seizes and Shock Lands. The basics for Jund are mostly for fighting Blood Moon, so the basic mountain doesn't do a ton for you. Exactly. It can cost you, I think, in the burn matchup to not have a mountain, and that's about it. In the burn matchup and specifically against the card Path to Exile, as we see right here. So back to Boswell. He's at seven. James has left up a full four mana. He just attacked last turn. Uh, Ghost Quarter is the other thing, I suppose. You'd expect from Boswell's seat that James is going to untap and kill you. There's only five power here, but you put him as being able to make two more. Yeah, he's seen Lightning Helix out of the deck. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. You can just cast a couple spells, and Fairy Conclave can just be activated as well. I suppose uh, James knows that Andrew has no red for the command. He can just activate Conclave and swing lethal. Yep. For Boswell, this may be his last turn. Any untapped red source would cost him some life as well, if that were the draw. 
yeah, he can attempt to pulse these elemental tokens, but we know that James has the Izzet charm at the ready. Yep. He's going to cast Tarmogoyf. The first one he played was Path to Exiled. And now James has perfect information. He knows Boswell's hand. And he should just have lethal here. Is it charm? We'll make an yep. elemental token. Cast a couple spells, build up the board. On his turn, mm -hmm. activate the Conclave and go for it. He did draw two and discard two as his mode. So now the Tarmogoyf blocks the 2-1. It's four damage off the elementals, two damage off the Conclave. It's, it's six. Had he looted into an instant, he'd have the game. But he did not. Here's Fairy Conclave activated. Here's a swing of everything. The block should be forced here from Boswell. Blocks the 2-1, goes to 6, and here's Lightning Bolt. That will seal up the match. So for James Ray and Jeskai Ascendancy, he hands Andrew Boswell his second loss of the tournament. Yeah, a lot of work done by this sideboard package here. I, I like that quite a bit. Uh, and of course, Boswell had some issues with his opening hands. I'm looking to 5 in Game 2 and keeping that 1-lander in Game 3, which I do think